In meditation, if you feel asleep, if there is something you can do, because I see in myself and also around that a lot of times we get sleep and we get this micro sleeps and then we just make like a, a quick movement and we wake up and we sleep again and there's a kind of struggling in it. And I was thinking like, what, what can you do about that? Is it possible to move like quicker? No. Through this step, is it better to um, let open the eyes a little bit more or breathe quicker? Or Actually, opening your eyes a little bit higher up, that helps. Mm -hmm. But you'll be facing inside from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. So that helps because attention is directed to the center. Literally, we will be holding each other with our attention. So, if you feel sleepy, you can raise the angle of your eye mm. gaze without looking at anybody. Next, you can flex your abdominal muscles without loud breathing. And that flexing, even rhythmic flexing of your abdominal muscles will be giving you enough blood pressure change and more oxygen. Mm -hmm. And um, next thing, walking meditation. Stay in during the walk and walk as quickly as possible. It will be fast walk, not like usual business. So stay in and that will give you the exercise. So uh, lastly, the Tantian focus is essential because what is it that makes you sleepy? Yeah, that's the second it's question thinking, actually. Yeah. Huh? It's your feelings. It's all the unfinished karma that is acting like a toxic waste. So our job here is really sweep the room clean next week. So we'll be doing that 24 seven, even when we are asleep. So when this toxic waste appears, let it disappear. Come back to your center, hold on to your Tantian, hold on to your breath, hold on to the spatial consciousness. There's like a 360 degree awareness and then you will not fall asleep. If you limit your awareness to your visual sphere, it's like 140 degrees. Then soon, since you're getting sleepy, it's getting narrower, 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 narrower. And then one point appears. When you look at one point, you fall into it like samurai into his own sword. Then you're asleep. Many other transitions in between. But mm -hmm. open up your consciousness completely 360 degree. Complete awareness. And tanti and focus. And when you have that and you don't follow your karma, you don't get kind of stuck in your karma, you can stay awake. Okay. Mm. And, and why does it happen actually um, like periodically in my, in my um, situation? It's always in the morning. Like, so in, in evening times, sometimes I think it's because I'm just tired. That's all. Why? Because we are human beings. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's fine. But it's always like from, let's say, from four to ten, and after that, it's gone. Fantastic. So it's shorter time, like four to only six hours. The rest yeah. of the twenty-four hour cycle is okay. Yeah, but but it's it's like um, one like f these hours are like full of let's say karma and the other hours are out of karma. No, at those hours your karma is resting and you are awake. Uh -huh. Between four and 10, your karma is bouncing around and it puts you to sleep. Yeah, for me, it's just I'm asleep. Like I need sleep. Like I would say like that, like, um, come on, you are tired, have sleep and wake up later. So Because it's always the same time. Like exactly and what's going to change in the following week. Okay. Starting now. Because your relationship to this toxic waste is going to change. That means you do not comment on it. Mm -hmm. You do not want to make it any better. You do not want to have some kind of relationship with it. Completely let go. So when you put it all down and you just let it appear and disappear, then it will disappear sooner. If you have any method, any comment, anything that attaches you to the karma that appears, makes it slower more painful, but it's more colorful, more eventful. You have more to remember. So Zen is boring at its best. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah. That's when it's best. When it's, it's just nothing happens. The moment you realize that nothing happens, it's boring. But when you put down all your thinking, boring doesn't appear. Because boring is thinking. Mm -hmm. Eventful and interesting, also <coughs> thinking. When your thinking disappears, just practice remains. That's all you need. The moment you realize that you are practicing, original practice mind is gone. We say checking, because you check the mind. You want to make sure it happens, and that's how you lose it. So, coming back to this original point, to this clarity, without obstruction, without any attachment, that's our job. The moment your intellect starts to define what's going on, you lost. You just completely lost it. And it happens to all of us. But as we practice more, it happens less and less and less. Then we are completely clear and we don't want anything. We don't make anything. We don't attach to anything. We don't identify with anything. And that's when practice really begins to work. You just do it. Okay? Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I was wondering about um, that Buddha was telling the middle way and we are now doing like actually extreme sports. So I don't understand it so much. If we no, don't no, know the extremes. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid about this Quran thing. So, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> that's one extreme that yeah, you yeah. found, your fear. Yeah. <laughs> the other is joy. Okay. So, one extreme is supremely rested, harmonious practice. The other is practice that you may not like, which is unpleasant, which is really putting you mm -hmm. on the edge. If we don't know the extremes, how, we do, how would we know what is in the middle? Yeah, okay, but <laughs> we don't have to push so much into extreme. Really? I'm, yeah, it's, I'm just, it's... Um, Why not? I'm just guessing, let's say. Like, well, you're guessing. Yeah, because um, it's just like a Hinduan struggle, like um, standing on a, on a foot for 20 years. And well, I'm not so much into That was just one week. Yeah. <laughs> just one week, what uh -huh. Ananda did. However, uh, you should see the direction. And sometimes it's good to really try what we are capable of. Uh -huh. um, Zen is not just for happy days when things are shiny and bright. It's for those days when we are sick, uh -huh. when others are sick, when we are dying, others are dying, when your body and mind are not really in great shape. Where is your awareness at that time? For that, we have to go beyond the usual. Uh -huh. We have to leave the comfort zone. And when we do that, we become more disillusioned with ourselves, which is helping our practice. And many times people come in and say, Oh, I've been meditating for X number of years. This is going to be just a piece of cake. And after four days, it's BAM! Right into the floor. That's very good because that ego is gone. Mm -hmm. So it has long and short term benefits. And uh, then the middle way is becoming super clear. Also, it becomes very clear what is human, what it means to have a body, to have a soul, to have a mind. What is it? So, it has a lot of good use, you know. And what I'm hearing right now is uh, your preparation mentally. So, give me something certain, you say. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking. I, and I'm, I'm not just giving like, you anything certain except this moment. <laughs> This moment is all we have, and if this moment is clear, everything is clear, day in, day out, with a body, without a body. If this moment is not clear, then nothing is clear. So that's why we focus on the moment, keep your mind clear, done. And it gives you the necessary education, who we are, where we are going, what's our job. Okay. I have another question, quick. Really? Yes. Fire uh, away. I was also about the rebirth thing because you, know, you were talking about that life is like um, always like rebirthing, let's say. Did we talk about that? Not today, last time. Maybe I can ask it here now, if not. Of course, you can. Yeah, uh -huh, thanks. Um, and then there is like, let's say, uh, this concept of 
um, like linear, like we there's nothing, we 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 get birth and then we die and then there's again nothing. So who I, said that? Um, you nobody, say that right now. Let's let's say I don't um, remember anything before my birth. So that's different. Maybe, maybe you don't remember anything. I accept, mm -hmm. but nothing before and after. That's a question mark. Yeah, and how how you prove prove this rebirth? The point is, we don't. Either your experience shows you throughout your practice, or it's not proven to you. Nobody tries to prove anything. But likewise, vice versa, you cannot disprove it if somebody had the experience. So if people are talking about it out of their own meditation experience, for you that may, may be a closed frequency because you haven't opened that up. So proving and disproving would work both ways. And we don't do any of that. So if for someone rebirth doesn't exist, fine. You just practice this moment, this lifetime. No problem. Okay. Zen works within one lifetime, within one hour, within one minute. Mm -hmm. Also it works two lifetimes, five lifetimes, millions of lifetimes. There is no time limit there. You establish your own limits and everybody respects that. I have students who really ask me, does rebirth really exist? And I said, what do you want? No, I, I, I tell you Do you I'm want to it. think in terms of rebirth? Do you have the experience? Do you have the inclination to really work with that? And if yes, we can work with that. But if it's closed for you and it bothers you, we don't have to talk about birth and death in terms of reincarnation. Question mark before, question mark after. That's it. But what you are doing within this life is equally important whether you believe in reincarnation. I don't really like this. You're not supposed to just believe it. Hmm. Either you have it or you don't. Either you talk about it as a partial or complete experience or it's completely foreign to you and then we don't have to touch that. It's all right. We should take something which is believable and therefore real for you. And we work with that. Hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I'm now a little bit confused, but anyway, um, only um, the reason why I'm asking this question, because if life would be like um, birth and then death and after then nothing, I would, um, I would handle my life different than it would be if there's rebirth. Um, you just said you didn't remember. So you don't yes. know whether there is nothing no, before know. or something yeah. before. Yeah. So can we just say that you also don't know whether there is nothing after or something after you die? Yeah, okay. But if, if you say there is rebirth, or I, had, I, I hear that um, words from you, I say, sometimes, okay, maybe you know. Maybe. Sometimes I say there is rebirth. Sometimes I say that. Other times I don't. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So what now? Like, fine, like... What wait. now? How can I help you? <laughs> no. How can I possibly no, help I, your intensive I, I week practice? Asking, like, if, if there would be a rebirth, I would totally change everything in my life. Maybe I would just go to the mountains in the hole and, and, and meditating until something comes. And if there's snow, I would say, oh, come on, like, let's have a beer there, let's enjoy life. Like, so then for you, anyway, there is like, rebirth. That no, means... no, for me, I don't know. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> so, uh, if you meditate, that means your mind becomes clear and those areas or frequencies that used to be closed for you, they open up. And then you see it for yourself. So if you keep your mind very clear and very aware, mm -hmm. And this moment acts like a well. It goes deep, 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 deep. And in your consciousness, you will find something to say, Oh, that's it. Now I see that there was a nothing. That I can really see this nothing before birth. And I can see this nothing after death. Or you will have some other experience that will be shaping your worldview and your self-image and the view on karma somewhat differently. I will not blow the punchline. I just suggest that if you came so far and you're motivated to practice, then keep meditating, keep the moment clear, and you will see what happens in the mind. 
That's why we say keep the mantra, keep the question, keep the sounds. And then you will experience it for yourself. Yeah, yeah that's fine. But if it doesn't exist, let's say we both. So why we do don't all say the work? anything? Like, why? why would we say anything? Yeah. In Zen, we do not presuppose. Mm. In Zen, we do not take anything, name and form as the basis. Sixth Patriarch, Hui Neng, he was the greatest in Tang Dynasty. He was fantastic. He said, originally nothing. But you should understand this nothing. And then everything becomes clear. Because if you really want to make this super, super precise, then you should say, originally not even nothing. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And stop. Okay, Good, <laughs> continue. Um, again, another question about uh, actually my knees. Um, let's say there's pain in the knees and I can make like some meditation in my Tian and it's getting warm inside me and I don't feel the pain. But does the pain, um, is it maybe it's okay that the pain tells you something is not right and if you don't stop it, maybe your knee will break or you will lose it or it doesn't function after that that good well, so yeah. so sometimes i'm thinking like hey man maybe it's better just to make a break because actually i would like to use my knees maybe the there are, next 20 there are years. two kinds of pain one is that really made by your karma your mm. thinking emotions etc And it can disappear when you breathe right, keep your mind right, and you stop that karmic cycle that produces the pain. We call that illusory pain. The other is when, like, somebody hits you with a hammer. Mm. Yeah. Wow! That's real. That's mm. real because something really physical happened. Uh, conventionally speaking, you should listen to the real pain and ignore the illusory. How do you know what's what? Because there's an overlap. You try to make it disappear by keeping your mind clear and you don't touch it, you don't explain it, you don't do anything, you just come back to clarity and this relaxed state of mind and you learn to relax despite the pain. You connect your breathing with it, you try to make it transparent, you try to just feel it as a small thing within a big thing and then it tends to disappear. But some pain comes from body type and physical limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your body type is fire. In, in fact, excessive fire. Fire and wood together. And because of that, you have to drink two, three times as much as normal human beings to keep yourself hydrated. If you get dehydrated, you have unnecessary pain. So in this case, you should see where the illusory pain ends and the quote-unquote real pain begins. We can relieve the real one, but it's your job to get rid of the illusory. And uh, then we can make arrangements. Some people do it on a chair. Some people mm -hmm. do it lying down. Some people do it whatever position they can take. Because the mind effort is most important. And of course, you have to deal with the body in one way or another. Right? Yeah. Okay, I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Only a question about this thinking. We always hear like, or the phrase, don't think. And actually, for me, thinking is a great tool. It can be very practical, can help, you can have a lot of fun with it. And it's for me, it's very good to think. And even when I hear you and it seems that you are also thinking and that you read a lot of books, let's say. And so OK, um, and, and now I hear always the phrase, don't think so. So have you seen the movie Edward Scissorhands? Yeah. What happened to the guy? Uh, I, I think they kill him at the end or Come something. On, I, I don't know really. It's a sad thing. Yeah. But what happened to him like from the beginning? What's the conflict? What happened to the poor man? He was different or... In what way? Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, with the hands, of course. So he had scissors instead of fingers uh -huh. on both hands. So he had a great tool, but he was totally attached to it. He became the tool. He couldn't do anything else than just cutting. He couldn't put the tool down. Can you put down your thinking? 
or you're always thinking. Because if you're always thinking and you're attached to thinking, your emotions suffer, your actions suffer, everything suffers because you can only think. If I was attached to this stick, could I drink? I couldn't. So if you're attached to thinking, it's a huge problem. We do not say that you should never think. We're saying, put it all down so that you could differentiate between the mind and its object, thinking and the source of thinking, your true nature and your self-image. And if you can differentiate, you're free. If not, you will be like Edward Scissorhands, who actually died in mm. the end because he couldn't become anything, just scissors. He could only cut. So reflect on that and then you will see why we suggest that you become a great and free man who can think intelligently and clearly, but when he doesn't have to think, he completely puts it down and he doesn't think. So, and you only see, only hear, only do it. So it's like um, control the thinking? Like if I don't need it, so I just stop it? You let it disappear when you don't need it. Okay. Okay. Good.